What if you could take one of your videos or all of your videos and dub them into one of 29 languages or all of 29 languages? Well, you could reach more people, people that would be interested in the information or entertainment that you have to share, but maybe don't speak the language you're producing videos in. Eleven Labs has just released the dubbing studio. Let's take a look. Just upload or paste a link, choose a language and click create. It's one small step for man. Instantly dubbing your content into multiple languages for a global reach. What if you've got multiple speakers? The dubbing studio automatically detects multiple speakers giving you precise control. Rename the characters, edit, and regenerate the dialogue until the accent and emotion so I put by El Marino. is just right. Now, Eleven Labs has had dubbing for a few months now. But dubbing studio is something a bit different. It allows you to not only dub your video in any one of 29 languages, but it also allows you to fine tune that dubbing experience by editing the original transcript, the timing and the translations to get it dialed in just how you want. Now let's try this out with a video that I have. I just took a really short clip from a video right off this channel. First, we go into 11 labs and we're going to come down here and we're going to click dubbing. And then I'll give it a title. We'll just say this is a test, a dubbing test. We'll select the source language, which is English. And for target language, we'll pick the first one, Chinese. Now I'm going to drag in my little video clip here. It's just about a minute. That's me, my ugly mug. I'm going to check the little box that says create a dubbing studio project. These are advanced features. I don't really think I need to fool with them. So we'll just hit create. Let it do its magic here. And now it took about a minute and a half uh, or 94 seconds, a minute, 34 seconds to work up this one minute video. Now we'll go over here to edit and let's see what it's done. It has pulled in the video. It has separated out the audio track and it has transcribed everything. So we hit play here and this is our original video. I'm not a guru or a YouTube superstar. I can't show you how I built a huge channel and shoot that video poolside. That's what the original video sounded like in the original language, which of course is English. So then what we'll do, we'll come down here, we'll click the Chinese button and you can see it dropped in the transcripts in Chinese or the conversion of the transcript from Chinese. 我不是大师或YouTube超级明星,我不能向你展示我如何建立一个大频道,并在豪宅的泳池边拍摄. And there you go, it's converted me to speaking Chinese. And interestingly enough, it's sort of using my voice, although I don't speak Chinese. I speak English and I'm barely any good at that. Now for editing, I can come down here and edit this track, this Chinese track on a whole track level and make the typical adjustments that you would make in 11 labs. If I don't really want it to use my voice, if I want it to use a different voice and use it in Chinese, I can swap that out. What it's doing here is using a clip clone, which means it's cloning the voice from the clip. So it's taking my voice and it's regurgitating my tone and all that kind of stuff into whatever language. So that's pretty cool. And those are edits at the track level. I can also come over here and make adjustments at the clip level. I have this clip selected here. And it is saying inherit the track settings for this clip, which is good. I don't want to make individual clip changes here, but I can make the changes at the track level, meaning the whole entire audio track here, or I can make them on a clip by clip basis if there's one clip that I want to make a change to. And you can regenerate then as much as you want to get it the style that you like. To get it out of 11 labs, it's pretty easy. We click export and then this little window will pop up here. And it tells us that we need to render it. And we do that by coming over and clicking export. Again, this took 94 seconds. I just fast forwarded through it so we don't have to sit through it. And then click download. And there's my video with the audio track dubbed in Chinese. What's happening here in this translation and this dubbing? There's several parts to it. So first you have the video that you bring in. It finds the audio clip. It's separating out the background, any kind of background music or sound effects from the speakers. In this case, there's only one speaker, so it only created one speaker track. That's my original. So it has that. It now transcribes that audio, and that's what appears in these boxes on the left is what it's transcribed. And then here, if we need to make any adjustments and regenerate or whatever, we click this little arrow button and it's going to translate it. So it's going to take that transcription and it's going to switch it over, translate it and transcribe it in whatever language that you want to use. So it'll give me, in this case, the Chinese translation of whatever this text is. 
And then from here, you can then generate the audio of that transcript that it copied over and translated. So we got translation, transcription. We got a whole bunch of things going on here. Anyway, I had to look pretty hard to find a place where the transcript needed some correction because it did a really good job, I think. I mean, perfect? No, but darn close. I mean, I had to hunt down a few clips here to find something that I could even mess with. Down here, I noticed that it sort of messed this up. This should say planned, not planned, dash, and then and. And this shouldn't start with an and. This should just start with the A. Now, it looked to me like it went ahead and updated the transcript on this side, the translation on the Chinese side. But I'm not positive, so we'll go ahead and click the little arrow for each of these clips to translate the change text. And then we'll go ahead and hit generate audio under the Chinese language for each of these clips just to make sure. And that's how easy it is to make a change. I like that. Now, if you don't wanna just stop at one language, you just come down here, click this plus button, and you pick whatever other language from their list that you want to uh, add. So now it's adding the language, and I don't see any waveforms in my Spanish track, so we'll just go up here and click generate audio on a couple of these clips to see what we can do. We've got the Spanish selected, and we'll hit play. No soy un guru ni una superestrella de YouTube. No puedo mostrarte cómo construir un canal enorme. Y graba ese video junto a la piscina en una mansión. And there you go. Sequence timing. This is another editing feature that's part of the dubbing studio. This lets you move things around and change the timing. We've got the background track. We've got the different speakers. We can slide those around to where they need to be. We can stretch them out. Going too fast or too slow. You can adjust that. So can you translate multi-speaker audio or video files? Yeah, absolutely. You saw in those tracks before that it split out a track for the background music, then it splits out the individual speaker tracks. And so you can translate those fairly easily. Now they've got a demo video, and this is a YouTube video that they've created, and it's a demo of a podcast where you have multiple speakers. We have the two hosts, and then we have the guest. And what they've done here is they've uploaded multiple audio tracks so that the viewer, well, on the viewer end, can then choose which language they want the audio to appear in. So the original is English, and these folks start out speaking English. System and you did it, and so now the user that's watching this video can, can say, "No, let's hear this in Spanish," and it will flip the audio track and start playing the Spanish audio track. When the new idea, no estás abierto a ella en contraposición, y de repente ves a un joven de 22 años. Que let's do uh, German. No tiene idea de la historia de la Lescau. Weißt du, wie man tatsächlich damit umgehen soll, dies zu verwirklichen. Wie bringst du es in Einklang immer tief im... And again, notice that it's coming through in like their voice, only if they were able to speak German. I don't know if they are or not. You can switch them to Polish. Ideenlabyrinth zu sein und ein und wszystkie setki różnych sposobów. Put on the Italian audio track. Bo nie daje ci może forse bagaglio intellettuale. Sì, quindi cominciamo dall'altra parte. And you'll notice uh, it works just fine when it switches from one speaker to another, and then we can switch them back to the English original. La ingenuità. Cominciamo con quella. Start with that first, which is cynicism. Um, mm. Right, so. And it really does sound like it's capturing this person's tone of voice and how they sound, just putting it in a different language, which is pretty cool. Now, I'm not sure this is the way that I would necessarily want to use multilingual video if I'm doing this podcast here and I want to have it available in five different languages, I would probably have five different channels, one for each language, so that all of the content on that channel is always in the language that the viewer is expecting and used to. Maybe I'm wrong, but that just seems like a better way to go for me. To that end, you could take whatever content, if you have a YouTube channel, you could take everything that you currently have and dub it into whatever other languages you want to reach what your audience is speaking, but you haven't been able to communicate with yet. The same thing would apply if you're doing social media content on Facebook, Instagram, or if you're doing internal things in a corporation, you have training videos and whatnot. You can take all the content that you currently have, bring it in here and dub it, and now you've got it in different languages. So that's pretty cool. So the short answer is yes, it doesn't have any problem with multiple speakers. And even also specifically tells us here that it can handle background music or noise. So you can just bring any finished video in here and start dubbing it in different languages. You don't have to split out audio tracks and worry with all that. So what does this thing cost? Eleven Lab says that pricing starts at 2,000 characters per minute for watermarked video and 3,000 characters per minute without a watermark for video or audio. 
the watermark says dubbed with 11 labs. So if you're willing to leave their watermark on there, you can save like a third of the credits. It does say free to start. I assume that means the original dubbing feature is free to start. The dubbing studio is only available in the paid plans. It is available in all paid plans, but only in paid plans, not the free plan. The paid plans at 11 labs start at $5 a month. Your first month, you get a big discount. It's only a dollar for the first month. The next plan is $22 a month, but you get a 50% discount on that one. The first month brings it down to 11 bucks for the first month and then $22 a month after that. They do have higher plans with many more character limits. The independent publisher for $99 a month, the growing business for $3.30 a month, and then moving on. I've always been a big fan of 11 labs compared to most of the competition because it's pretty simple and straightforward. There's not a lot that you can mess up there. I do like that they're giving you editing options with this dubbing to be able to change timing and move the audio around a little bit there in the sequence to make it work. And they give you the basic editing adjustments that you've come to know in 11 labs, the similarity and that sort of thing. I do wish they would extend upon that a little bit, both in dubbing and in just text-to-speech or voice cloning and allow you to make some more fine-tuning adjustments in those. But it looks like this is doing a really good job. It's pretty impressive. Now, granted, I don't speak the Chinese or the Spanish or the anything I'm using here, so somebody else has to tell me if that's right or not. And that would certainly be a consideration if you do want to make sure that it's, you know, accurate, I would think. If you've tried this out already, please let me know. I'd like to hear what your experience is, so any tips and tricks you've learned, and how it's working for you. If you're not subscribed to 11 Labs yet, there's a link in the description. Please click that and check it out. I am an affiliate for 11 Labs, which means if you end up purchasing something, you don't have to. You can check it out for free. But if you end up purchasing something, I may receive a small commission at no extra cost to you. Now, I certainly appreciate it. I got a bunch of teenagers living in this house, and they eat a lot and food is very expensive. So thank you for your time, and I do appreciate you uh, checking it out.